Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CCT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and I hope you're doing very well today. It's getting close to the end of January. Well, I guess not that close, but I'm uh, thinking about the fact that February will be here soon and you might be interested in something that you could do to prepare for Valentine's Day. And plus, I was just thinking about finding an easy pattern to work with. So today I'm going to do the pattern Cross Your Heart. And that is C-R-O-S-S-U-R-H-E-A-R-T, Cross Your Heart by Jenna Black. And it's a pretty simple tangle with a lot of different possibilities for things that you can do with it. And so I'm going to show you um, just a very basic pattern. And I'm going to start with a diagonal type cross. And towards the middle of my tile, I am using a um, four inch tile. And I like to do that because I have an album. Um, it's a 12 by 12 album. And I have bought um, the plastic photo holder pages, like for a scrapbook, that hold four by four inch photos or tiles. And I just like how they fit in there a little bit more tightly than the three and a half inch tiles fit and I cut my own tiles and I use a little corner cutter that I got I guess from Amazon or Michaels something like that and this is what I use it has uh, three different ways that you can cut the corners oops sorry and that's what I use okay so um, just for reference I made these about as well, maybe a little bit wider than my pencil cap. And one seems to be a little bit wider than the other, which doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a reference on these. I'm gonna make that one a little bit longer. Okay, I'm using um, a Micron 01 and my graphite pencil and a Tortillon. And just quickly, I noticed when I picked out this tortillon that it's kind of flat on the end. You see that kind of blunt. You can take a big clothespin, clothespin, I'm sorry, paper clip, and open up one side of that paper clip, and then you can push through and extend that tip back out, okay? So, okay, so now that I've got that in there, my little X, I'm going to go ahead and use my pen and mark that X. And now I'm gonna start making my little hearts. So from that tip, I come around, make the top of my heart, come back around to the side. They don't have to be perfect. If it helps, you can find the center, put a little dot, and that helps me to see where I'm going to kind of make my hearts a little bit more even. So that one would probably go about right there. Make the top of your heart. Okay. And now off the top of each one of these, from the center of each of these hearts, I'm going to 
make sort of a petal shape. Or a crown, I'm not sure what you would call that. And you can see that these are not exactly the same, it doesn't matter. So just keep going around. When I'm finished with this one, I might try adding a little bit of color with watercolor. Okay. And next we're going to add kind of a little diamond shape here. A little V that makes almost a diamond shape. And the next thing I'm gonna do is from the tips of these hearts, I'm going to come down and make like an elongated seed shape. And then inside each of these, I'm going to add some orbs. Okay, go to my next one. You can choose not to put these orbs in there. Like I said, it's a pattern that you can kind of play around with however you'd like. If you have some little white spaces there, you can fill those in. I did this pattern last year for something that's called Valentangles. And uh, I really like what I did, but I haven't been able to reproduce it. I'm not exactly sure how I did it. So I'm just going to show you the basic pattern for this. As always, you can find the step out for this on tanglepatterns.com. Okay. And I would probably be doing this a little bit better if I wasn't trying to look around both the light and my camera. <clears throat> okay, so now for each of these, I'm going to start at this top of the heart and bring lines down that meet at the center. You can make these as wide as you would like. Okay, and then I'm gonna do that on the other side too. And when you have an aura like this, where they all meet at one point, that's called an anchored aura. OK. 
trying to make them about the same, but they're a little bit wider in some places. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is also an option, is I'm going to add striping. So I'm going to come down a little bit, and I want to leave a sparkle. So I'm going to leave a spot there. Go to the next one. And I want it to look like my sparkle is kind of going up. So I'm going to make this one a little bit higher. Remember to relax and breathe. Especially when I'm coloring in like this, I tend to get caught up in it. And that's when we hold our breath, and that's not good. Okay, so now I'm going to do that on the other side. I think for something like this, if you're going to color it, it might be easiest to use like a colored pencil or use watercolor pencils with a water brush and use that to spread the, the color out. And this is a water brush. This chamber is actually filled with water. And, and when you squeeze it, some water will come to the tip and you can use that to spread out your colors. And when you're doing this striping, you don't have to have these edges in your sparkle perfectly straight. If you leave it a little jagged, it actually looks more natural. Okay, so we're just going to continue to do that on each of these. As always, I invite you to fast forward if you need to. Pause until you catch up. If I'm going too fast. And I enjoy your comments. Welcome your suggestions. I don't think I'm getting these the same width as I did on the other side, but it's still going to look fine. Especially when you get a lot of stripes in here, you're not going to notice. The goal is not to have perfect work, but just to enjoy your work. I still struggle to this day with comparing my work to other people and what they do. But I think the saying is, don't compare your day one to somebody's day 100 of doing this kind of practice. I'm sure I butchered that quote, <laughs> but basically don't compare. I never 
feel good when I compare myself to other people. Just compare your progress to how much better you're doing today by practicing every day. And I do practice and tangle every morning. I love it. It's the best way for me to start my day. And by all means, do see what other people have done. I mean, when I share something, it's because I want you to be able to practice and try the same thing. So when someone shares how they have learned to do something, then take your time, practice, and try doing it too. Okay. Enjoy the process, enjoy the practice. The more you do it, the easier it will get. I struggled with some patterns quite a bit when I first started doing Zentangle. But as with anything, the more you practice, the easier it gets. And you'll find there are some patterns you'll begin to know and love to use quite often. I have several favorites that if I just want to sit and listen to an audiobook or something, then I find my favorite patterns and just start adding them. And when you let go and don't worry about the results, many times you'll be surprised with what you can do. There are so many people now that have videos on YouTube with such great ideas. When I first started doing Zentangle, I did not like doing the blackening in like this. But now I do, I enjoy adding this kind of drama. It really adds to your tile.
I really like this striping and the drama that it adds. And I can tell in several places that I have a little bit of white left and you can go back and touch that up, but I'm trying to go a little faster on this. Again, the nice thing about watching this on YouTube is that you can speed it up, slow it down, stop it, make it work for you. Plus, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so that the camera focuses on my work and not on my hand. Okay. So on these outer petals, I'm going to start with a line in the center. And then I'm just going to add some stripes along here. I'm sure I've said this in some of my other videos too, that I don't show my um, videos in high speed where it looks like I'm going through this really quickly because I want you to be able to see it in real time. And then you have the option to speed it up. Whoops, forgot my little B on that one. You may be able to hear my dog snoring in the background, but actually that's a good thing if she's asleep. Okay, last one.
Okay. So that's the basic pattern. You can keep adding other um, embellishments. One of the things that I like is to add a couple of leaves. So let's just come up this way and down. And then we're just going to add the veins in our leaves, a little bit of curls coming down to that center line. And I think I'll have another one coming off this way. And let's see, let's put a small one here. Okay, so I paused it while I got my watercolor pencils. I have Prismacolor pencils, and I got out three different colors. One is rose. This one is rouge. Well, whatever. <laughs> crimson red. Here we go. Pink, crimson red, and olive green because I want to show you if I were to use my watercolor pencil, how I would do that. So I'm going to come to the center part and lightly add my color. Because one thing I've learned is if I take actual watercolor and put it over this dark ink, it dulls it. So the easiest way to do it is to add it with your watercolor pencil and then use the water brush to soften it. Um, you could, if you wanted, add that same striping and sparkle on that second layer. I'm not going to do that this time just because it takes so much time to do it. That's definitely an option. Again, make this your art. Make it the way that you want it. Try something if you don't like it. Start again on another tile. Uh, I cut my own tiles because it saves me money and then I'm not distressed if I do a tile that I really don't like. It's okay. 
a lot of times I will just turn it over and try again on the other side. I encourage you to not throw your tiles away. If you do one that you don't like, save it, come back to it later, and maybe add to it. Um, you can add another layer of color on top of it and see what you think. Another layer of patterns. It's called transcending. Okay, so now I have my uh, watercolor brush. I had a smaller one, but my dog attacked it. Okay, can't find it. So basically, I have it wet. I don't want it too wet. And then I'm just going to go on top of this. I have a paper towel here that I can wipe off some of the water if there's too much. And now I'm just going to go very lightly with that water on top of where I put the watercolor pencil. And then just kind of even it out. tend to really concentrate <laughs> when I'm doing this so I don't do a lot of talking. I enjoy doing detail work like this. Okay, so that helped to spread that out. I'm going to put pink on these petals. You can do it a little bit more color there close to that and then just softly put it out here in the rest of the petal. So again, I'm pressing a little bit harder right here next to this edge, similar to doing a shadow with your graphite pencil. And then softly out this way. Still, my favorite way to do a tile is just in black and white. I'm not worrying about color. 
Or my next favorite thing to do is to completely color a tile with a, a watercolor wash and then come back and tangle on top of that. I am not trained in art and I um, struggle with color combinations. I'll be the first to admit I don't know what I'm doing, but this, I'm not being graded. It's not a contest. I'm just doing this for fun and showing you what I know. Okay, so I have my brush again, and now I'm just going to soften that again with a little bit of water. I'm trying to keep it a little bit stronger next to the edge along here. And I could go back and add more if I need to. Remember to relax, take deep breaths, enjoy what you're doing. Okay, and now I'm gonna add the green. I'm gonna go strong up the center. And do it kind of heavy right next to these petals. Being careful where some of these might still be kind of wet. And then I'm just going to lightly add color on the rest of the leaf. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit just to make sure I don't have pink on there when I go to do my leaves.
Okay, I've grabbed my canary yellow and I'm going to put some yellow in these little diamond areas. Like I said, it's unusual for me to add color on one of these videos, so I'm just hoping this works out well. And what if I add some yellow in the center? Just to brighten that up a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Clean my brush. Make sure I don't have green on it. And I probably don't need to do much on this. But it does help to brighten it a little bit when you go ahead and add the water where you've put your brush. Okay, so these petals should be dry here. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of graphite coming up this way where these meet. And with the color on there, we may not be able to see it very well. But again, like I said, I don't do a whole lot of color on mine. So we're just doing well. What if, what if we add the graphite? How is that going to help? Just trying to give it a little more depth. We could even come in with a um, black watercolor, but I'm not going to try that on top of graphite. Okay, that did add a little bit of depth to it, you can see. And um, this seems a little open. I'm trying to figure out what I want to put out here. One thing you can always add that's easy to do is fescue. I like to let leave a little bit of highlight on the end of my Fescue. Okay. We could always do zinger. Just play with it. Add whatever you would like to add. 
or leave it. You could always add a mocha. If you ever watch Maria, she always uses mucha and fescue. I just know it needs something outside of here. And another zinger. Just look around and see where you think it needs some balance. I think that's definitely helping. Okay, I think that looks better. Um, I'm not gonna add color to these. I'm just gonna add some highlight or um, shading on the zinger. Just put a little bit of graphite on one side and then on my mocha. I'm just adding a little bit along one edge. Gives it more of a round look, gives it some depth. And then soften those. All right, what do you think? <laughs> I think I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to add my chop. I think I'll hang it here.
have fun with it. Make it your own art. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.